This is The Order, welcome back to The Order, I am Celtic Templar, and welcome back to The Order, and welcome back to another how-to video, and today, y'all, we are going to be covering the infamous Pictish Noble. Now, apparently, y'all actually chose this one at a high amount compared to the others, which, that's saying something. So, what was the Pictish Noble, you might ask? Well, uh, our accounts of the Pictish Noble actually come from the, mostly from the Romans, the Britons, or the Saxons. Our first accounts of them first come from the 3rd century, or at the end of the 3rd century, and as well all the way up to the 10th century. The accounts of their ferocity on the battlefield spark the imagination. Now, uh, many times over, many people believe that if you read the Roman accounts, it's stated that the Picts fought like ferocious demons that cared nothing, not even for the flesh of their own bodies. Well, that might not actually be true. Because one, the Picts would have fought, yes, as ferocious warriors, but the thing is, they would have mostly fought uh, as like a Shiltrum-like unit. Now, kind of like what we see at the Battle of Bannockburn or at the Battle of Falkirk. And in doing so, this will mostly been used with the infamous Pike, as we see here. So yeah, now, Pictish nobles were known to actually fight inside the ranks with their men. Other accounts also state that they were the ones that actually rode into battle on horseback and threw javelins as a semi-nomadic type cavalry would. Now, 
the reason I say semi-nomadic, even though these people weren't, is because one, there are accounts that stated that they rode around the flanks or as well around their opponents and threw the javelins only to go back behind their own lines to replenish their, well, javelins. And the fact is, this actually explains on how they would have fought. The Pictish cavalry or Pictish nobles at that time would have fought just like that. Now there are accounts of them also stating to have fought on the foot, since one, I don't have a horse with me, so yeah. Now, the elongated tunic I'm wearing is that of the winter style. Now, there are many uh, depicted artwork of the Pictish nobles or Pictish warriors wearing these elongated tunics like you see me wearing that go pretty much down to my feet. This is actually, well, this is on only a few uh, historians like me and myself actually believe that this might have actually been a variation of uh, winter coat, or in this case, a winter tunic. Because there are accounts that, from the Roman perspective, that during the summer months, or as well during the spring and such, when they were on their campaigning season, it stated that the Romans saw these warriors uh, being barefoot and wearing uh, hardly any pants. That's probably because of the weather in Scotland. The weather in Scotland, if none of y'all know, is different depending on what it is. And the fact is, during the summer and uh, spring months, it's mostly like that of a boggy marshland compared to that of what it would normally be during the winter. During the winter, it would freeze. So, there are many accounts that do depict them showing of a type of small gated buckler, sometimes H-shaped, sometimes square-shaped or uh, diamond-shaped. However, they do uh, occasionally do ha wear, use the round shield, like a Viking would. However, those are mostly used by either one, the guys that were using the pikes, or the said cavalrymen. Kind of obvious why. So, but yeah. Now, the armor as I am wearing is mail. That was the main armor of the picks. Now, there is the account of them also wearing a, a wool shirt underneath this, or a wool tunic, so that way it goes underneath the mail, adding in a form of protective armor. Now, I probably should have worn this tunic when it came to my last Pictish uh, warrior video, but uh, yeah. So, there are accounts though of many of you want to know, what about their helmets? What did their helmets look like? Well, that's the thing. Due to the fact of the erosion and as well the geography of Scotland kind of destroys metal armor and such, uh, we have only found very few pieces of Pictish style helmets. In fact, there is like only one I know of, that of which is to this day in Edinburgh, but sadly it, I can't find it online. Uh, because I've read about it, but unfortunately, due to its, uh, of how old it was, and the fact is, of the, uh, climate it had to go through, it had to stay in a type of vacuum seal. So, in other words, it can't be taken out for pictures or whatever, like we see with Sutton Who helmets. So, yeah. Now, there are many accounts, though, that do state that the Picts fought well, or Pictish nobles did fight with something like that of near identical to the Roman style helmets, like what I see, what I, pretty much like this. So yeah, this is the best iconical way I could get it to work. However, it stated that their helmets, unlike the Romans, or somewhat like the Romans, is kind of near identical, like what we see with the late Roman auxiliary helm, with, which if any of y'all remember with the cheek plates uh, walking in front, for example, uh, Instead of it being like that, it would be open in the front, but it would close in the rear, meaning it protected protect the entire neck. The only problem with that, it probably kept you from looking up. So that was probably the only reason that they probably stopped using it and probably evolved to more of something like a open back neck. Now, picture style weaponry for nobles mostly would be the sword. The sword would be the most iconical weapon of the picks. And not just with the blade, but as well with the scabbard, especially with the sword cap. So, yeah. These were stated to be a copy off of the Roman Gladius. Some say, some historians think that it was an evolution of the Celtic sword. Honestly, it's hard to say. Now, 
the most common of their melee weapons would be their axes. Now, they did not use these axes for throwing, no. They actually used them for close range combat strikes. In other words, say if like, say I'm fighting my opponent and he has a shield, guess what, I'm gonna use this light hand axe to break his shield. In fact, it's actually stated that the majority of their axe heads were light and small, like a hatchet like this. However, were sl had a slightly longer shaft, like this, meaning it had more of a power strike to it. In fact, doesn't matter if I'm wearing male armor, this thing, this male is not going to stop this weapon. In fact, Romans actually accounted to state of how their axes cleave through the helmets. Ooh, that's saying something. So, what actually happened to the Picts? Well, they were absorbed by none other than the Gales, or the Norse Gales, as many people call them. And who were these people? Well, the true ancestors to the modern Scotland. So, the Picts technically somewhat were absorbed, died off, or were just absorbed entirely by the said Scottish uh, immigrants from, well, Ireland. Yeah, many people don't realize this, but it's kind of funny. But yeah. But as you can tell, this is my winter style clothing as I'm wearing. Now, there, as I said, most of the time this would never actually be seen, but honestly, I felt like it was perfect for the said Pictish Noble. So, yeah. Anyways, guys, why don't you see me get dressed up and y'all can see me how you can actually get this one started. Shall we?
I hope you all like that little bit of an exercise. Now, as you all saw with me moving, I am light foot in the type of form of combat. Now, the weird thing is, the Romans nicknamed these warriors, instead of just calling them the Picts, they also named them the light foot of the north, or in this case, the small shield men. There are various types of accounts, but it's kind of no wonder why the Romans feared these guys. Because one, I feel light and mobile compared to that of what I would with, say, heavier armor and with a sh heavier shield. Because one, this buckler shield is perfect for when it comes to close range combat buckler shield fighting. Now, this is kind of why the Romans kind of feared these guys, because its accounts state that the Romans ended up having their swords pinned to their shields when the picks drew near. In other words, when the picks got real close, they pinned the sword, which is my sword arm, right up against my own shield. This would be a really horrifying type of event. Just imagine seeing a Pictish warrior charging at you, and as soon as you're trying to draw your sword, guess what? This light buckler shield makes it perfect for me to deflect or worse, grapple it and hook it onto you. This is kind of why uh, the iconical H-shaped shield of the Picts was actually mostly used. Now, they did use rectangular and uh, other variations on uh, shield designs, as I said, but I think the H-shape would have been probably the per most perfect type of one, because one, this could, as you all saw me with the spear, I'm moving with it as a type of guide rail. And as soon as I get close for a launch, it's a lot more easier. It's a learn that the picks were actually hard to kill. So, the most likelihood they were absorbed by the Gauls, or the Gales, as some people pronounce them, but yeah. Uh, but the really awesome thing is, though, the picks never exactly truly died off. Because it's actually stated that in the far northern highlands of Scotland, there are still the Pictish type of customs, or clan system, that once existed. However, by the 1700s, that started to die off, especially with the Battle of Culloden. So, the uh, weird part is, the Pictish clan system was almost near identical to the Scottish clan system. Which is why so many people kind of get them so confused. Now, in retrospect, I feel light and mobile in this stuff. I don't feel fatigue of any type. Now, there were accounts when I was using my heavier round shield, that apparently it felt like I wasn't, uh, well, able to <laughs> keep moving. And the fact is, even with the fact I was using the, now I think y'all saw me actually using the uh, pike formation without a shield. There are accounts of that, as there is pictorial evidence like this that actually shows Pictish warriors uh, using a three rank deep system. In other words, there would be a line variation of them. In the very back there would be archers and as well there would be spearmen in two ranks. So in other words, this would have actually been a three rank deep type of warfare. And the fact is, the Pictish noble, uh, Pictish noble like me would have actually been right in the center for that, so that would explain things. Now, I do have to put this out here, while doing this, there are accounts that I do remember of how the Picts actually did fight. There are accounts like that as well, as I said, the Battle of Angora and Fulcrum. However, when it came to heavy cavalry, what the Picts would have done is the first rank deep, they would have knelt down with their pike formation and had them pointing right towards the enemy. The second rank, though, would have actually probably had no shield. Uh, reason being, because they were in the center of the pike formation, there was probably little need for it. And the fact is, the pike, you know, I hear many people already say, asking, but Templar, why is the pike formation so effective? Well, kind of obvious. This pike formation actually is what kept the Romans at bay for such a long time. And as well, it's also what even uh, halted the Anglo-Saxons for such a long time, and even made the Vikings fear the picks for such a long time. But Sadly, we don't have any accounts of the picks of what they would have fought with or uh, what it looked like, except for when it comes to pictorial evidence. Because sadly, the picks never re left any written records, only pictorial evidence. Now, there is the Old Irish uh, language that of which, or Old Irish uh, lettering that we do see in some parts of the lands of Scotland. Sadly, though, it is varied. 
And the fact that even the island of Orkney, for example, also is an area full of Pictish artwork and as well some historical artifacts. The problem is though, there are very little of them out there. And the sad part is, most people don't look up the Picts. Because whenever they think of great warriors that fought against the Romans, they automatically think the Celts, like of Gaul or Britain, or as well the Germans or the Persians or such like that. But or as well even Carthage, but they never think of the Picts. Reason is kind of weird, so yeah, I'm not even going to answer that one. Uh, but we can see why the Picts were such a fearsome warrior. I am light in this type of equipment. I can easily rush in. I can easily move. There is a mobile type system, meaning I don't have to worry about getting killed. In fact, this is probably why the Saxons could not beat the Picts. In fact, there are many accounts that state that they, when the Saxons fought against the Picts, it was mostly a Pyrrhic victory most of the time. Those Pyrrhic victories ended up uh, escalating to the fact that one, it was almost impossible to invade Scotland or Pitland at this time. Now, there is also the account that when the Romans actually fought against the Picts, there were accounts of them actually fighting uh, like guerrilla style warfare until they end up facing the Romans in a type of skirmish battle. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, there's a two different variations on this. One, the guerrilla warfare was actually to pepper the Roman legions when they were uh, in full march and such, and hurl their javelins. In fact, Pictish cavalry were known to charge in and throw their javelins at marching Romans, and then scurry away into the deep lands, fog-filled forests of Scotland, which horrified the Romans. The Romans even called them ghosts and devils, because they suddenly appear and then disappear at the next second and then reappear in the middle of the night. This is why Hadrian's Wall was needed to stop the Pictish invasion, because one, Picts were hard to beat. In fact, uh, take it accounts of more than hundreds of Roman commanders, and as well, even a Roman emperor who tried to invade Scotland and died in the process. Not because of warfare, but because of disease. Yeah, uh, which most people don't realize that part. Uh, but the thing is, the terrain in Scotland also helped to the Pictish advance. Meaning to the fact that one, uh, even though the Picts would have lost in major battles, they would have won the war against the Romans. And the fact is, they stopped the Romans from ever invading. And as well, they even actually, uh, well, thanks to their geography, it helped to slow down the Roman advance. One major example of this is what we can see during the time before Scottish independence in the years of uh, 1290 to 1314. Most of the battles that we see during that time, especially with William Wallace and Robert the Bruce, such as the Battle of Stirling Bridge, the Battle of Falkirk, and the Battle of Bannockburn, are all next to, well, Stirling Castle. That's because the terrain in Scotland is so bad that it makes it almost impossible. This is why Rome kind of feared this marching order in order to deal with the Picts. And the fact is, we can see why. So, yeah. But now, skirmish style warfare was like that what we see with our pike. However, the pike formations were actually used to uh, slow down and as well attack the rest of the uh, entirety of the, well, Roman military. In fact, the Romans even stated that the ferocity of the Picts was so ferocious that if they were part of our army, we could conquer all of Germany. Now, there are many accounts that these accounts come from many Roman commanders who fought against the Picts, and many times over, many uh, Roman commanders even stated that if they actually had the Picts as allies, then the war could have, act, the conflict with the Germans could have probably been over, maybe fighting against people such as even to the far reaches of the Rhine and Danube could have been conquered and such, or as well, maybe even the Goths could have been conquered as well. There are different variations, but I don't think the Picts would have done that. Because knowing to the fact, the one major reason why the Picts won in various battles in their own home country, because one, they had a home field terrain. And the fact is, the Picts actually were finally, uh, by the time of the fall of the Roman Empire, when the Romans were leaving, uh, well, Britannia, Guess what? The Picts invaded. 
saw this as a major weakness and destroyed parts of Hadrian's Wall. And as well, this later led to the major invasions all the way down to the south of Britain. However, they were later forced back by the Saxons and as well the Britons. So the sad part is the Picts never fully reconquered uh, or conquered the entirety of Britannia. In fact, there are many accounts that even state that during the time of Christian, uh, when the Picts were being Christianized and such, there are accounts that state that they were actually believed that they were the sole descendants of the well, former Kingdom of Britain. However, these come from uh, English monks or Irish or Welsh monks, so there is a variation in degree of uh, whatever part of this is true, so yeah. Uh, but yeah, if any of y'all have any ideas for our next how-to uh, video, let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to take a look at it and as well try and see on how they actually would have dressed. As well, y'all, if any of y'all uh, have any other suggestions for videos that are coming? Let me know in the comments below. As well, y'all, if any of y'all want to get this sweet attire and such, I will leave links down below where you can actually get some of this stuff. Now, my buddy who made my shield and as well my sword, uh, you're gonna have to contact him from, from Facebook, so yeah. Anyways, guys, hopefully, see y'all in the next one. Like and subscribe for more, and hope to see y'all in the next one. Have a great day, y'all.